for some reason it takes a lot of energy for me to watch something new, especially when I didn't suggest it to myself. Finally, begrudgingly, I put it on, I sat back during the winter time, got something to drink, hot cocoa like a man, and I finally saw it. Not only is this movie really good, but it was really impacting to my life. I had been going through a rough time considering two major events that had just happened to me. One, my grandfather passed away, and two, I had several projects fell on me. When I saw this movie, I knew it reminded me of somebody. It was tugging at some heartstrings, but I didn't know exactly who and what. And I started looking at the two main characters, the teacher and the drummer. And it finally had dawned on me, it's me and my dad. Full disclosure, my dad is nowhere near an asshole like this guy. Well... My dad is a very silent type teacher, but will push you when needed. So you may be asking yourself, why do you make the parallels between them? There's two scenes in this movie that I want to make reference to. And those scenes are when he gets cut off the team. And then runs into his teacher for the first time after being cut off the team. I don't know if you heard, uh, I'm not a shaper anymore. Yeah, I, I, I did hear that. Did you quit? His teacher tells him that he was fired because of things that happened during that time. I really shouldn't spoil this for you, you need to watch the movie for yourself. With that said, spoilers, if you haven't seen this movie, pause it here and go watch it. You won't regret it. Or who knows? You really might. I don't know you. I don't know what you like. If you don't like this movie, we're not friends. I'm just saying. You can do whatever the fuck do you want to do. The teacher asks him if he remembers that story of a legendary drummer that tried to drum for the first time in front of another legendary drummer. Worry about how Charlie Parker became Charlie Parker, right? Yeah, Joe Jones threw a symbol at his head. Exactly. Parker's a young kid, pretty good on the sax. Gets up to play at a cutting session. Then he fucks it up. And Jones nearly decapitates him for it. He then goes on to say one of the worst things you can ever do to that person, trying to become great, is say, good job, when they did a terrible job. I tell you, man. Every Starbucks jazz album just proves my point, really. There are no two words in the English language more harmful than good job. But is there a line? You know, maybe you go too far and you discourage the next Charlie Parker from ever becoming Charlie Parker? Because the next Charlie Parker would never be discouraged. Yeah. This is when it hit me in the face like a brick and realized that's my dad. You can ask any one of my brothers or sister how many times my dad has told us good job. One time my brother Eddie killed it at singing. I mean he did an absolutely great job. People were clapping. Everybody was telling him how good of a singer he is. And then... He comes to my dad and he says, Hey dad, I did a pretty good job. My dad did a sign that in Spanish groups, you know exactly what it means. He just, it's, eh, eh, he did a pretty good job. Try not. Do. Or do not. There is no try. I got really upset at my dad for never telling my brother good job for any of the things that he did when clearly he deserved to hear a good job. And I told my dad, why is it that you can't tell Eddie that he did a good job? Obviously he did a good job, and he killed it. Can't you give him a compliment? My dad then looks at me with his wise eyes that he only does when he's going to make a point. And then reverts immediately back to the eyes of, eh. He says, what is it going to do if I tell him good job? 
I want him to go there every night with the mentality that he has to do better than the last time that he sang. I want him to reach heights that he's never reached before every night. I looked at my dad with astonishment because I didn't think my dad had that masterful plan inside of him to push us to keep playing, keep playing. I looked at my dad with astonishment because I didn't think my dad had that masterful plan inside of him. I honestly thought my dad was being old school and kind of mean to be honest with you. But I realized he was just trying to make us better, push us to greatness. I had a similar experience with my father. I came home with my report card showing my dad the few A's and B's that I had gotten on my report card. My dad, unimpressed, gave me the report card back and said, I need them B's to become A's. It wasn't until I watched The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air that I saw how hard Uncle Phil was on Will. The reason being is because he saw a lot of Will in himself. This was his chance to take an individual who has less opportunity than his own children and instill it into him, what he feels is a, the part of himself that made him stronger in character. This is what my dad was, in his very gruff and unassuming way, was trying to do for us. Just as the teacher sees his student in him and the potential he had if he pushed him. It didn't work, Ben! In the next scene of Whiplash, we get into where the teacher invites them to an event where they may be able to get signed to a CD label if they're good enough. Then in an astonishingly dick move, the teacher doesn't give them the music sheet to the next new song that they practice without him. And of course, he stumbles, he's embarrassed, and he does a terrible job. At first, I'm thinking and watching, this teacher is seriously the worst person on the planet. The kid runs outside, embarrassed hugs his dad, and his dad is ready to throw in the towel for him. But I'm sure the student has that line going through his head. He goes back out there, he leaves it all on the line, he puts his sweat, he puts his blood, he puts all his tears on the drums and plays one of the best solos in the entire movie. You see, the thing that my father taught me, and what this movie reminded me of when I was down in the dumps, is that the road to greatness, you'll be denied time and time again. They'll laugh at you, they'll call you crazy, they'll tell you there's no place in this world for you. But like all great people, they will laugh at you until the product that you're creating is needed. They will reject you until you're the best player on the team. They'll tell you, why are you inventing this when you don't even need this? And then accept you and call you the greatest person in the world once that thing is needed. So take it from me and my father and this movie. Keep going on your path to greatness because the path to greatness is a difficult one. And all the great people that you've ever heard of were rejected at one time or another. At this time I'd like to thank my father for teaching me these things. We may not always see eye to eye and we may argue a lot, bump heads a lot. At the end of the day, he taught me some of the best things in my life, and I love him for that. Thank you, Dad. Be proud and know, even when you're not here, your teachings will live on eternally through your children. I love you, Dad. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss, Papa. Give me a kiss. <laughs>